Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have an interesting way of trying to show or prove the law of cosines. Now we're probably familiar with the law of cosines. If we have a triangle with an angle, let's call it theta, between sides A and B, and C is opposite to the angle theta, we can then say that C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus twice the product of A and B times the cosine of the angle between them. And we're given that the vector c is equal to a minus b, hmm. or the vector a minus the vector b. How can we use that piece of information to prove the law of cosine? Well, it turns out we can do so by taking the dot product of both sides and setting them equal to each other. In other words, our strategy is going to be to do c dot c and show that that is equal to the quantity a minus b dotted with a minus b. Well, that makes sense because if the vector c is equal to the, the vector a minus the vector b, then the dot product of the left side must equal to the dot product of the right side. So let's start with the dot product of the left side. The dot product of the left side, c dotted with c, is by definition equal to the magnitude of c times the magnitude of c times the cosine of the angle between the two. Now, since we're talking about the same vector, the angle between those two will be 0. The cosine of 0 is 1. So therefore, this is equal to c squared because we know that theta is equal to 0 degrees. Of course, the cosine of 0 is 1. Now we're going to do the dot product of a minus b. So the dot product of a minus b, a minus b, dot product, a minus b, well, that can be written as, hmm, well, a minus b, let's write that out first so we know what we're doing here, a minus b, so let's write a minus b, and that is equal to a sub x minus b sub x, and that would be equal to in the i direction, plus a sub y minus b sub y in the j direction, plus a sub z minus b sub z in the k direction. Also, let's show graphically what that looks like. So let's draw a vector a and vector b. So let's say if I have a vector a, and let's say I have a vector b, like this. And now I'm going to subtract vector b from vector a, so I can say that vector a minus vector b is equal to a plus a negative b. So what I can do is add a negative b to a. And let's use a different color. Uh, let's use blue for that. So here, this would be negative b. And now if I add a to a negative b, I get the sum of the two. So that would be this vector right here. And so this vector here, let's call it the vector c, which is equal to a minus b. Now, if I move that vector c over to the other side and write it over here, so there's my vector c, and then if I imagine that the angle between a and b is theta, notice that this triangle that I have over here is exactly the same as the triangle that I have over here. I have vector a, vector b, and c at the end there, and the angle theta in between. Okay, so let's see what we can do with that. So next, let's go ahead and do the dot product which means I'm going to multiply the component of the first vector times the component of the second vector, which means I end up with a sub x minus b sub x quantity squared plus a sub y minus b sub y quantity squared plus a sub z minus b sub z quantity squared. All right. What do we do next? Well, now let's go ahead and multiply those out and see what we get. So this is a sub x squared minus 2 a sub x b sub x plus b sub x squared. Do the same over here, plus a sub y squared minus 2 a sub y b sub y plus b sub y squared. That would be plus a sub z squared minus 2 a sub z, b sub z, and that would be here uh, plus b sub z squared. Remember, 
all this is equal to the dot product of a minus b times itself. And then, of course, we know that that must be equal to c dot c. All right, I think you might be able to see the strategy here. Let me rewrite this so we could make, it can make a little bit more sense. So this can be written as a sub x squared plus a sub y squared plus a sub z squared. So taking this and this and this term and writing it together, and that should be a 2, plus b sub x squared plus b sub y squared plus b sub z squared. So now I'm taking all the b terms, b sub x, b sub y, and b sub z squared. And then I can write minus 2, because I have a minus 2 here, a minus 2 there, and a minus 2 there. I'm going to factor it out, times, and notice I have a sub x, b sub x, a sub y, b sub y, a sub z, b sub z. So a sub x, b sub x, plus a sub y, b sub y, plus a sub z, b sub z, like this. And now let's translate all this. This is equal to the magnitude of a squared. So we can write this as a squared. This is the magnitude of b squared plus b squared. And this is equal to minus twice, minus two times. That would be the dot product of a and b. The dot product of vector a with vector b. And of course, the dot product of vector a and vector b can be defined as the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them. So this can be written as a squared plus b squared minus 2 times the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the cosine of the angle between them. And then since this is equal to a minus b dotted with a minus b, which is equal to c dot c, and c dot c is equal to c squared, I could then say, well, then this can be put over here, and I can write that c squared is equal to that, and therefore I have shown that that gives me the exact formula of the law of cosines. Hmm. So we can actually, using vector notation and using the dot product, show that the law of cosines is indeed correct, and that's how we're done.